Hello everybody. Um, we are going to pretty much draw to a close the three chapters of the story we've been studying about aerobic cellular respiration. Um, this is the basic story of how a mitochondria works. Um, it is how your body turns food into the energy of ATP. So anyway, may take a while. I'll try not to make any mistakes. If you remember, first thing we should probably do is label. This is supposed to be a mitochondria, and this is the cytoplasm of a cell out here. So this is the outer membrane of the mitochondria. This would be the inner membrane the mitochondria. <coughs> this then would be the matrix. I encourage you to, if you're filling this out online, kind of follow me where I'm going spatially because otherwise, you know, I'm saving space in here to draw other things. This over here is going to be the ATP synthase molecule this is going to be proton pump number four. This is going to be proton pump number three. That'll be proton pump number one of the electron transport chain. I think that's good. Let's uh, start the story then. We'll go over here and I will zoom it in, but it's going to make some crazy s noises here. We know we start the story with a process called glycolysis in which you take a glucose molecule and you break it into two pyruvic acids. That process requires a little ATP split the glucose but it's going to give you back 4 ATP so you're ahead 2 ATPs. We also talked about on a previous video that it requires that we bring in two NADs here which will grab some electrons and become NADHs. I'll put a little box around that and that's the story of glycolysis. Now we have to bring this pyruvic acid into the mitochondria. And if you remember, it comes in. And on the way in, loses one of its carbons to carbon dioxide. Also, we need to get a couple. I'm just going to put. I'm just going to put one here. One NAD. I'm going to grab some electrons again. And we'll have NADH. What you got to remember is the story really is about both of these pyruvates coming in. So some diagrams would show you a two there. That means when the next, the sum of the two pyruvates enter the mitochondria and that's going to be the case in the Krebs cycle as well. We'll show half the total number of things but it will know that we have to double it for the next one coming through. Okay, now over here let's write a very generic Krebs cycle. We'll say okay this is going to come over like this and this molecule is now called acetyl and the acetyl will enter the Krebs cycle we'll label that but it can't really enter the Krebs cycle without the help of an enzyme called coenzyme A 
show coins I make coming in here, helping Acetyl get together with oxaloacetate to enter the Krebs cycle. Now, as the Krebs cycle reactions proceed, that acetyl is broken down and we lose both of those carbons, it's carbon dioxide, and now basically that molecule is completely broken down, that original pyruvic acid. The Krebs cycle will allow us to do another substrate level phosphorylation, so we'll get 1ADP rephosphorylated into ATP. And let's not forget that our electron carriers are going to come in here and strip some electrons too. We're going to have three NADs come in here, grab some electrons, become three NADHs. There will be another three when the other pyruvate or pyruvic acid comes through. Don't forget that FAD also does some electron carrying, but I'm going to show it here and then I'm going to forget about it. So we'd have some FADH2 there. So if we take a look at what's going on now, you might say, where does this story go from here? Well, we got to do something with all of these electrons that are being carried by the electron carriers. And as if you were here, I would ask you, where do they go? And they go to proton pump number one, electron transport system. The way I'm going to show that is I'm going to pretend it's a little truck that's bringing its hydrogen down here. It's going to drop it off at pump number one, and it's going to go back to get more. This NADH is going to bring its electron down here, drop it off, and go back to get more. Now this, these three NADHs are going to come down here, drop their electrons off, and go back to get more. So we're continuously feeding electrons into uh, pump number one of the electron transport chain. As we mentioned in class, the electrons have to move in order for the proton pumps to, to do their work. So these electrons will move from proton pump one to this little ubiquinone there and when it does the result will be hydrogen ions being pumped out of the matrix and into the intermembrane space and when the electron travels from ubiquinone over here to pump three and then on to cytochrome C we will have another proton being pumped out of the matrix into the intermembrane space and then this electron will be passed along to pump four, but there's uh, it has to also move through the pump in order for the pump to do its work. So where is it going to go? Well, it's going to go out here into the matrix, and as we learned in class, it's going to be picked up by oxygen gas, and with the help of those electrons, four hydrogen ions and oxygen gas will make two molecules of water. And as long as there's oxygen gas here to pick up these electrons, electrons will continue to flow through the electron transport chain. And when electrons continue to flow through the electron transport chain, hydrogen ions will continue to be pumped into the intermembrane space. The hydrogen ions will build up out here. And you can see there's really two reasons the matrix is going to have a low hydrogen ion concentration. First reason is you're pumping them out with the proton pumps. Second reason is you're using them to make water. So there'll always be a low concentration of hydrogen ions in the matrix and a higher concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space. By facilitated diffusion, then they will go through ATP synthase and the energy given off as they tumble down their concentration gradient will be used to phosphorylate 32 ADP 
into 32 ATP. And that's called electron transport phosphorylation or chemiosmotic phosphorylation. Now, if we zoom out, I apologize for the crazy noise. We see the whole story there. I don't think I forgot anything. Now this is called aerobic cellular respiration. And it's called aerobic because aerobic means means with oxygen. So as long as this oxygen is present, electrons will continually be removed from pump 4, which allows pump 4 to pump the hydrogen ions. And electrons will also continue to flow through pumps 1 and 3, which will allow them to continue to pump ions, creating this gradient. But if oxygen is not present, the electron transport system will stop. It will receive no more electrons from these electron carriers, so basically the entire mitochondria shuts down. And all we got left is glycolysis. And at least we'll be able to get two ATPs out of every glucose molecule, as opposed to if the mitochondria is open, we can get 32 ATPs, two there, two there, one for each pyruvic acid, and 32 there, 